Well, there's got to be something, right? You think about it? Uh, more than I'd like to, yeah. It's, I kind of went through my own ordeals. I was, to this day, I'm still skeptical. I'm still stubborn about it, but... Skeptical about what? That there is an afterlife. You went to a Christian school or a Christian church or something? <laughs> I've been kicked out of plenty of them. Do you believe in God's existence? <sighs> I'm worthy. I'm sorry for my language. You're aware of... Existence. I apologize for my language on him, but... No, that's normal. I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says the carnal mind, that is the sinful mind, is in a state of hostility towards God. That's why his name is used as a cuss word. We hate God, the Bible says, for no cause. And the reason we hate him for the, it's the same reason criminals hate the police. It's a moral argument. We don't want God telling us what to do because we love to do that, which is wrong. I mean, fornication and pornography and all the stealing, all those things that are exciting. God comes along and says, that's a no-no, and we hate him for that. So, so, so do we you, know that's a no-no? We, we're going off of a word that's been diluted. We don't know. if the, God hasn't came down here recently and stated the rules. You don't really hear much about him now in the sense of him being out here now, laying down his wrath, will, his you know commandments, whatever you want to call it. It's like he's non-existent almost, and we have to go off of faith, you know, malarkey signs. Can I just stop there and, and say this? There's so much evidence for God's existence, you're like a fish in the ocean saying, where's the ocean? Where is the ocean? Let me just give you some evidences of God's existence. Flowers, birds, trees, sun, moon, stars, seasons, fruits, the human eye, babies, puppies, kittens, ponies. Everything you see around you cannot be created by man. That's crazy. We don't know how to make a, a grain of sand from nothing. So the Bible says the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. And Joseph, God gave you a conscience. You know right from wrong. The word conscience means with knowledge. With knowledge. Every time you do something wrong, you do it with knowledge that it's wrong. So before I said you're in a state of enmity against God, like he's your enemy. Um, I wouldn't say that. Well, you, the language you used before is a bit of a clue. Have you ever used God's name as a cuss word? A couple times, yeah. Have you lied and stolen? Of course I have. Remember Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Of course I have. Who hasn't? So, oh, some homosexuals haven't. So, Joseph, I'm not judging you, but you just told me you're a lying thief, a blasphemer, and an adulterer at heart. And you're like Adam who was running from God because of his sin. He's trying to hide from God. We're all like that. I was like that before I was a Christian. I was in a car once, come back from a surfing trip, and a bumper stick was on the car, and it said, God first. And that made me so upset, I couldn't wait to get past it. It just made me feel weird, because I knew God should be first in my life, because he gave me life. Everything you've got comes from God. Your hearing, your eyesight, the apparatus that you use to fornicate comes from God. Your teeth, your tongue, your blood, your bones, everything you have is a gift from God. And you've used his name as a cuss word. There's no thanksgiving in your heart. And so, if God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, are you gonna be innocent or guilty? You'd be guilty on Judgment Day and you'd end up in hell and that grieves me. We've just met, I like you, and the, the thought of you ending up in hell horrifies me. You may not be concerned, but I am deeply concerned because I know this is deadly serious stuff. Death is the arresting officer that's going to drag you before the judge of the universe whose law you've violated and hell is God's prison without parole. And that's terrifying. Now do you know what God did for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to go to hell? It sounds like you had a Christian background. Tell me, what did God do so you wouldn't have to get... for all our sins, so, you know, right? He died yeah. for all our sins. You and I broke God's law. Jesus paid the fine. Just before he died, he said something weird. He said three words. It is finished. In other words, the debt has been paid. If you're in court and someone pays the fine, the judge can let you go. He can show you mercy and justice can be done. And when Jesus suffered and died on the cross and cried, it is finished, you're saying the debt is paid. That means God can legally commute your death sentence. He can let you live forever. He can forgive your sins let you walk out of the courtroom all because of the death and resurrection of the Savior. What you have to do is repent and trust in Him. Now I trust today you've heard the seriousness of sin from a new light, that your lust is adultery, hatred is murder, lying lips and abomination to the Lord. The, the death sentence comes from sinning against God. He takes it that seriously. And because it's so serious, you might be able to find a place of sorrow in your heart for sin, to realize that Jesus suffered and died on the cross to take the punishment in your stead so you could live forever. That's what happened on that cross. And that should break your heart. Man, if I took a bullet for you, wouldn't you kind of respect me? 
not use my name as a cuss word. You'd say, man, you did that for me. What you're saying is on point. The thing is, he took the route, not his father. The Bible says God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. God was in Christ. Old Testament says, a body you have prepared for me. Jesus Christ, the express image of the invisible God. The Bible says... But God in, a, in a physical form, right? Yeah, in a physical form. He he had, the womb. You're not going to die if you haven't got a body. So God had to create a body to suffer because he's spirit. And that's what happened on that cross. So, man, please think about this. Think about your sins. Think about the Savior. Think about the prodigal son. Remember what brought him back to his father? He realized he was desiring pig food. That brought him to his senses. And if you search your heart, the desires of your heart would be for filth. That's what should bring you to your senses and say, Lord, I've, Lord, I've sinned against you. Please forgive me. And he will. What are you going to say? Please forgive me. That's what you need to say to God. Just go vertical with your repentance. Man, God will change your heart and give you a, a love for righteousness, which is a miracle for sin-loving sinners. And I care about you, I love you, and I, I don't want you to end up in hell. It would be my fate. So would you please think about this? Sure. It's not your fate. You're wearing the devil's t-shirt. You're serving the devil at the moment. Satan's your master, and his will you do. So it's not your fate. Come to God and say, God, forgive me, and, and he'll change you. Come out of the kingdom of darkness into light. Cool. So are you going to think about what we talked about? Of course I will. Okay. Thanks for talking to me, man. I really appreciate it. No problem.